Hello and welcome to the first ever, there's a proper word for first ever, what is it? Preliminary. Penul- pre- what is it? Preliminary. That's good. That wasn't what I was thinking of, it's good. Preliminary. Prelimin- say it again? <laughs> the first ever Terrain Tuesday here on the channel where we are building this epic terrain that started life as a Himalayan salt lamp. A goblin salt mining corp happened upon an ancient obelisk. It seemed almost luminescent, but incredibly hard. No tools could break through it. If we can figure out how to break this thing into chunks, think of the jewelry it'll make. We'll be rich. The foreman crowed. First want to take a chunk out of this thing gets double pay for a month. After almost giving up, the goblin foreman hires some adventurers to help out. But as one of the party steps forward with their hand on the hilt, the rock begins to glow. How cool does that look? Let's get started. If you don't know, a Himalayan salt lamp is a lump of crystallized salt from the Himalayas that they carve out in the middle of and stick a lamp in there. They're sold under the pretense that they're really great at fixing loads of problems. They give off negative ions and help you sleep better and lower anxiety and cure asthma and all this sort of stuff. It's all unfounded and whether or not you believe it doesn't really matter for this. I personally think it's a load of guff and I own the lamp because I think it looks cool. Either way, you can pick them up from Amazon for about $30. I've put a link in the description to one. But our main thought when coming up with this design was that we really wanted it to work for people who already owned a salt lamp. They could quite easily take the fix off, put it onto this terrain, use it for game nights for a couple of weeks and then put it back again on the shelf and the terrain wouldn't really bother the lamp at all. That goes for the scaffolding that goes around the rock as well, the idea being that some goblins are trying to mine it or worship it or something like that. The scaffolding can be taken out and placed flat so the whole piece of terrain can get stored pretty small. The scaffolding build was pretty simple, just using popsicle sticks and some wooden dowel, scratching up the sticks with an X-Acto knife and trimming off the edges, making them a little bit of rough and ready, ready for some painting later on. With the dowel, I'm using 5mm dowel. Any less than that, I think you can get away with doing nothing to it. Any more, you're really going to have to spend some time weathering it. This kind of sits somewhere in the middle, so I just kind of scratched it up a little bit, took some chinks out of it, so that when we come to add washes and things later on, they're going to have some lovely texture to show up. Apart from that, it's all just held together with regular PVA glue. I ended up making three of these structures to go around the salt lamp. We'll see those later, but now it's time to head off to the workshop. Once the wooden base had been cut to size, it was time to figure out how we were going to build up that quarry-like terrain. Tim decided to use bark for this, which he had a big bag of, if only he could find it. Tim likes to keep things. This is the one. Da -da -da. Hey! Looks promising. There we yeah. go. You can obviously find bark out and about on your travels. If you do, make sure you've popped it in an oven and safely cooked it, basically, to kill anything that's living inside. Or you can pick it up from pet stores. It's very often used as bedding and floor substrate for lizards and other cool creatures. Either way, your bark is an awesome texture to work with. It does so much of the work for you. All you have to do is give it a paint, and all the little nooks and crannies there will start to look like stone in no time. Once we figured out how the whole thing was going to get put together, Let's see how long it took us to realise that we were going to need a hole for the light bulb. Oh shoot, we're going to have to cut a hole there. Yes, we <laughs> <laughs> I just saw it. <laughs> you put that there and then. Yeah, there you go.
<laughs> so this is sacrificial surface. So I cut and I glue and I spill super glue and yeah, I make a mess. resin on top of it. And I don't worry about it because this is just uh, nailed on the edge mm -hmm. to the plywood surface underneath. And every couple of years, we'll just make it brand spanking new. Just take that, that'll just pull off? Yep, it's just nailed on the edge. So there's no glue, there's no, uh, no nothing holding it on, just hopes and wishes. There you go, top tip, top Tim's top tips. I'm starting a thing, Tim's top tips. I can't even say it, Jesus. <laughs> Would you, would you, did you hate having to use nails in all your train builds before that stuff came along? So this actually <laughs> comes from Jason. He loves this stuff and it really does work really well for, for example, taking 3D printed block and yeah. sticking it to a board. Oh, okay. Um, better than, I, glue, hot glue sucks. Right. <laughs> so um, hot glue should mostly be viewed as temporary. Uh-huh. Um, you know, there's some, sometimes you can get away with it, but the proper is is what's going to make your terrain last. Now we get to the fun bit and using sprackling. A very thin layer on the underside just to give it some support then dyeing the rest with some wood stain. Sprackling is a gypsum powder based compound that's used to patch holes in drywall or plaster wall. The main benefit of sprackling over other joint compounds is that it doesn't shrink when it dries. The reason we're using wood stain to give it that brownish colour is if you're anything like us, when you use this in a game, you're going to have player characters who don't care about it as much as you do, and it's going to get chipped. Much easier to deal with if those chips are a brownish colour similar to the terrain, rather than the blue or pink vibrant colour that this sort of stuff always seems to come in. A little bit of stain goes a long way and doesn't seem to affect the integrity of the product. We really wanted to give an idea that this obelisk has been mined from a quarry found by accident so we're building up the train on the edges to create a crater kind of feel also gives us a nice flat surface that we can actually use as play area for our characters then before we left it to dry we took some more bark and stuck it in to give us some protruding rocks then using a watered down white glue formula we smoothed it all out so we're just gonna imagine that this goes right about there we don't want to fill this top space up too much because we want to have room for figures and we also have some beautiful scaffolding going in there. And now we watch Spackle dry. Once it was dry, we used some super thin super glue on those protruding rocks due to the slightly porous nature of sprackling that would soak in and really hold them in place. Before you start painting, it's always worth dialing some of the final details in, making sure everything fits. Here we found the scaffolding was a little bit too tall. Sometimes it's even worth grabbing hold of a few miniatures you've got lying around and seeing how it looks with actual characters on the board. Here Iron Man is helping us out. Once we're happy with all of the structural parts of the build, it's time to start painting it. Before we do that, we need to add some texture to the terrain. Using a sl very slightly watered down white glue solution, we're going to paint that across the sandy areas and then just throw some sand on it. We're using a mix of play sand and then some higher grit stuff that we've commandeered from nearby. Having a few different sizes of grit in the same tub of sand really helps go towards that natural finish. You're going to want that sand and glue mix to be really dry before you start adding paint to it. So whilst we're waiting for that, we're going to start working on painting up the other bits and bobs. First of all, I 3D printed some barrels and crates to kind of go with that quarry theme. If you want to see more about the 3D printing process for these, you can check out my own channel, Geek Prints. I'll put a link in the description. So this is uh, 13 parts uh, red brown to uh, 7 parts black. Okay. <laughs> Did you get that, everyone? 
a squirt of one and not quite a bigger squirt of the other. <laughs> In other words, you wing it. Yeah. Go for a color you like. <laughs> nice. Of course, you don't have to use an airbrush for anything like this, but we have it and it makes short work of it. But any dark brown paint here will do what you need it to do. A dry brush in a light cream to bring out some of the higher details and then a black wash to get into the grooves and we'll call those done. The scaffolding was much easier. We're using the grain of the wood here to our advantage and just using a light brown wash to bring out some of the details. The PVA glue and sand mix had dried so we knocked off any excess sand, took it out the back and gave it a coat of spray. We're using a Rhinox spray here. It's not really available anymore more though but black spray would be fine and because we have that brown paint in with the sprackle and the sand is kind of similar color that we want as well we don't need a really 100% coverage here any little bits that shine through are just going to add to that sort of texture back on the airbrush we're giving all of the stones a slate gray kind of color and just look even with that single coat how much that bark just pops as rock and the main surface gets a lighter brown as well it was at this point that we felt like it looked a bit too ashy almost volcanic so we went back to the drawing board and tried to lighten it up again with some more golden and orangey browns never be afraid to keep working on a model if you don't quite feel like it's right you don't always have to stick to the initial plan here using some more orangey browns really gave us that quarried kind of dirt stone texture that we were aiming for some dry brushing with a few really light tones finished off the terrain build once it was all dry we stuck it all together <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. This is the first time you handed me this. <laughs> <laughs> cool as this looks I think you could go a couple of steps further with this honestly my first thing I would love to try and do is see if I could get a smaller LED RGB bulb you know the kind that comes with a little remote with a few different colors or maybe some LED strip wrapped around the inside of it and then you could have color changing orb you know it could be sitting there with a nice dim glow that looks quite uh, appealing but maybe as the adventurers turn up it starts to glow red and ominous ready for an attack i think there's a lot of scope here for this item and also i've tried to build the terrain so that i can repurpose it at a later date uh, the scaffolding can all come out and the, you know, the holes could be used to have some sort of tiki torches and instead we could have it more as like a summoning stone or perhaps a, a big obelisk that is worshipped by a tribe I think there's a lot of scope here for terrain. That's something I'm really passionate about with my terrain. I want it to not only be uh, looking awesome, which I think this really does, I want it to be usable and reusable. And also I love the idea of it having something uh, that happens, you know, a piece that's removed or a light that comes on or something. And that's what we've really got here with the Himalayan lamp and the, and the bulb. And all you'd have to do is place it towards the DM screen so that you can have this controllable behind there with your party not being able to see. I think there's some real scope for some fun stuff here. I hope you've enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Do us a favor, give the video a like if you enjoyed it. And of course, subscribe for Terrain Builds every single week. Lots of other awesome stuff here from the Game Chamber.